partners, especially the Chickasaw Nation, the Shiloh Church, the Corinth Black History Museum, local tourism and chamber offices, and dedicated past superintendents. And there's so many more. We are just so lucky uh, here in Tennessee and Mississippi to have such a big family that cares and ensures that places significant to the understanding of who we are as a people, that those places are saved. We are going to start this morning with a few slides about the plan, where we are in the planning process, and what we are hoping to hear from you over the next few weeks. Finally, the best part is that we will break up into an open house and you can peruse some of the preliminary ideas on the boards around the room and share your thoughts with us. So thank you again for coming today and being willing to share your thoughts with us about the park's new lands and how you would like to see them managed. Parks across the country have always had a community aspect to their formation and to their future visions. In almost all cases, there have been someone locally or someone associated with that site who have thought that that place is so significant to forming our history that we need to set it aside. So you join that process uh, today. Let's see where I am here. Um, I, I would like to start uh, this morning by clearly defining where the National Park Service, Service is in our planning for these new lands. The development concept plan is in the early stages of development. What you see in the newsletter and the materials we are presenting what we have produced so far, and you can find it also on the link uh, that's noted uh, here up on, on the screen. These are ideas that the parks planning team has developed with a consideration of ideas shared with the park over the last few years, and with much consideration of protection of the park's resources. I really want to emphasize that these proposals are preliminary. They've been thoughtfully prepared, but right now they lack input from you, the end users with expectations of the park and with experiences that you believe others should have, as well as yourself and the community, should have while they're visiting. We need your food feedback to improve these designs and move closer to a plan that we could implement that will protect the park resources and provide you the experiences you want. We, are, we truly are listening and we really do want your input. Today's objectives and we'll basically, uh, Chuck will I'll run through this here in just a minute to give you more uh, detail. Our objectives include an introduction to the park process, why the park plans the way we do, and what the park hopes to protect and provide. Then we'll present a bit about why the park needs a development concept plan that we'll refer to throughout the presentation as the DCP and what we hope that the plan will accomplish. Then we'll present a little background on the plans process, how we've gotten to this point and where we hope to get next. At the end of the presentation, we will show you how to share your feedback and thoughts about the preliminary proposal. 
We also want to answer any questions that you may have at this point about the plan process. So as I said before, I'm fortunate uh, to be the superintendent of Shiloh <coughs> National Military Park and really work with an uh, absolute amazing uh, staff. Uh, today, you'll be working with that staff uh, from the Shiloh and Corinth battlefields, as well as the talented team of planners and land specialists at the regional Denver Service and Washington offices. So first I'd like to introduce um, Rachel, there she is, Rachel Brady Baldwin in the back here. She is a community uh, planner from the Southeast Regional Office. And then out front here we have Charles or Chuck Lawson, who's the project manager out of Denver Service Center. And uh, we have really enjoyed working with them. They're an awesome team and they've been guiding us through the process. And then we have our uh, staff. Um, is Ashley in the room? She's, she's out there making sure everything is uh, running well in the, uh, in the, in the front. Um, we have Stacy in the back, Stacy Allen, um, Lisa and Stacy, our admin uh, staff, if you'd raise our hand, then our greeters and uh, making sure everyone's in the, in the right place. Um, uh, Laura Lee? She's out front. Oh, she's out front? Okay, great. She'll be at one of the stations. Matt? There he is, Matt McMillan in the back, will be at one of the stations. Uh, Anthony will be at one of the stations as, as well. And is that, that's everyone I think. So just to remind folks, uh, this is uh, under the park overview, this is the park purpose uh, set out years ago. Shiloh National Military Park preserves and interprets the battlefields, sites, resources, and oral histories associated with Shiloh, Tennessee, and Corinth, Mississippi during the Western Campaign of the Civil War. Um, got a, uh, uh, a few changes to this. Actually, our annual budget is 3.1. So we we got it <laughs> um, a little switched around there. Um, so generally, we we have 28 permanent staff, 15 seasonals. That varies year to year, depending on project money um, and uh, just when folks leave and come. So. But that's, that's approximately 25 to 28. Um, our annual visitation is up to 428,000 with an additional 112 virtual visits. The economic in, impact, 25.6 uh, with 350 jobs uh, that it generates between Mississippi and Tennessee. The authorized acreage is 9,200 and the current ownership or current acreage, the 9,200 is the authorized boundary. So authorized acreage and what the park uh, currently uh, owns is 7,585 uh, acres. So over the last 20 years, the park has grown from initially being 3,900 uh, acres and encompassing that uh, larger uh, amount um, that includes both of the battlefield units um, and Davis Bridge as well as fallen timbers. We are thankful to our political representatives and friends who ensured the passage of the Dingle Act that enabled the most recent expansion. So this map uh, shows the location of the expanded parkland uh, landscape. And as you can see, it's geographically dispersed. 
and includes many, but certainly not all the key locations during the siege and battle of Corinth. This map also indicates the properties that the DCP is intended to provide a planning for and is in, printed in a large format in the back of the room um, or in the other section of the uh, visitor center. The park uh, today lacks management planning for the newly added landscapes. The park is in need of a plan that will help us to ensure these irreplaceable resources are protected and accessible to our visitors in a way that encourages a cohesive interpretation of the Battle of Shiloh and the Siege and Battle of Corinth and is considered of the ways in which the public wishes to use these sites. The DCP is the park's opportunity to develop the overarching vision as well as the ideas for each site. And this public process, why you are here today and why we are requesting your input, provides a way for all of you to influence the plan and priorities for its implementation. The DCP will provide goals and visions for the future of the wider park landscape. It is a plan that will guide our efforts for several decades. We will continue to need your help with future projects to bring it to fruition. I know that your efforts today will help us make it a plan that we will all be excited about executing. So at this time, I would like to pass the mic to Chuck, who will give all of us more details about our work this morning. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Catherine introduced me just a minute ago. My name is Chuck Lawson. I work as a project manager for planning projects in the National Park Service. My office helps parks uh, all across the country nationwide with managing complex planning efforts like the DCP uh, for the new lands here at Shiloh. And as uh, Catherine mentioned, I, I also want to thank all of you for taking the time to join us today. We really appreciate your your interest and your assistance uh, uh, with our efforts here, so thank you. I'm going to take you through a few slides about uh, how and why the park is undertaking the development concept plan, why the park needs a plan, uh, what issues we hope it will address, and then how you can help us move the process forward. Uh, so first let's talk about why the park needs it. So Shiloh's lands have expanded significantly over the last 20 or so years. The park's uh, primary existing planning document, its general management plan, was completed in 1981 and it only serves the main battlefield unit and was published well before the Corinth unit, before Fallen Timbers, uh, and before the Davis Bridge site were added to the park. So the park lacks comprehensive management planning for the new lands that have been added since the turn of the millennium. Uh, with that, it also lacks consideration for the protection of natural and cultural resources on those lands. It lacks expectations for how visitors will access them. Uh, and it lacks guidance for how visitors should travel between the sites and what kind of experiences the park should be managing for at each one of those sites. Uh, so furthermore, the, uh, part of the experience of visiting uh, the, the sites, especially around Corinth, is understanding their historic connectivity. So visitors that come to Parklands should see that each site is part of a larger, uh, cohesive Civil War history, that, which is something that the Park Service can accomplish with consistent interpretation, uh, signage, and use of NPS branding. Uh, so addressing those issues are part of why the park needs the plan, but also generally the purpose of the DCP is to provide long-term guidance for public access and preservation of recently added siege and battle sites in and around Corinth uh, for land at the contra contraband camp, uh, for the land at Davis Bridge, and, and at Fallen Timbers. 
The plan will outline an approach for landscape <coughs> restoration work and site development of battlefield areas while also integrating uh, natural, the natural and cultural resource protection goals of the park. Uh, through the work of the plan, we will assess impacts related to that proposed development, as well as to increased visitor use, as well as to, uh, it will also present desired conditions for visitor experience and how we hope the visitor will understand the park's significance and history. And it's going to propose prioritized infrastructure improvements. Uh, including adding features that will enhance uh, visitors' uh, experiences on the park's lands uh, in, a in a manner that is cohesive and connected across all the unique areas that make up the expanded park. And so we, and, and lastly there, we intend to do all of these things in a manner that will maintain positive relationships with all of you and will reflect the community's shared goals for the public. Okay, so we can talk a little bit more about those goals and then uh, briefly discuss what we expect the plan to deliver. So the, the first step, the first goal in this project is establish desired future conditions for each location in the park. So each individual site will have its own uh, desired uh, future conditions that are appropriate to the resources, uh, to uh, the anticipated visitor experiences, and to the interpretive opportunities that are provided by the landscapes at each unique site. Across all of the parks, units, and subunits, the plan will look for ways to link them experientially and physically through recommended visitation routes, uh, through NPF branding and use of the arrowhead, uh, through, and through the design, uh, through comparable designs, similar designs of physical infrastructure that visitors will recognize as they move between the sites. So then, in, in the plan's process, with desired conditions established, the next step is development strategies that are prepared to help each area meet the expectations of those desired conditions. We refer to the desired condition and the, manage and the development strategies together as the management concepts for each area, and that is the bulk of the, the language that's in this newsletter and the associated maps are the collection of management, preliminary management concepts for each of the sites that we're doing planning for. Okay, so here's an, uh, an example of the outcomes for one of the areas uh, for which desired conditions were proposed and then applied on the ground to come up with a preliminary development strategy. So Battery Robinette, where we are, the, the subunit that we're in right now, is one of the more complicated areas that the plan is tackling. It's a central location within urban Corinth where the Battle of Corinth was decided and where visitors can be presented with panoramic views of the city uh, and interpretive opportunities that help them understand that unique piece of history. It's also a contemplative landscape uh, with both war graves and memorials to fallen soldiers. It contains the park's interpretive center, where we are now, and it's, as well as its maintenance area, meaning that because of those, the presence of those features, we expect more visitors in this area and we expect for those administrative uh, functions to continue. So it's somewhat more crowded, but we nevertheless wish for visitors to be able to have a solemn experience when they come here. So we expect the site to provide both of those opportunities. Uh, we also expect, of course, to preserve the important resources at the site, both the natural resources and the historic resources, and then articulating desired conditions for the site that meet those expectations was the first step in our process. After which we worked on the development ideas that you can see on the map uh, that would help us reach those desired conditions. You can see on the map that we have, uh, there's a lot of stuff, but some of the information is preliminary proposals to add a new nature trail experience. Uh, improve interpretation at Nature Trail, like one of the uh, one of the means in which you can spread visitors out on the landscape and provide uh, some space for people to have that solemn experience. Uh, you can also also see that we're proposing to improve interpretation and access to the battery area, uh, reconfiguring accessible parking out in front of this building and accessible walkways. Uh, a proposal to relocate the maintenance facility out of the center of the historic resources and out of the view of the visitor, and then also on an expanded footprint that will be useful to the park to accommodate the additional maintenance needs of infrastructure that's proposed for all the other units that this site supports. 
And again, uh, there, and there, there are other options on this. this uh, you can see this map uh, printed out in the, in the lobby. This is just preliminary, as Catherine said several times. Both the desired conditions and the strategies to reach them are at a preliminary state. And other maps like this, along with the narrative draft of the desired conditions for resource protection, for operations and visitor experience, are all presented in the newsletter that's available here. Um, and then again, again, this is just one of the maps out of nine areas that the plan is, uh, is working on. Uh, proposed outcomes like this here for each individual site are on the boards that are out in the lobby and we'll talk about uh, how we'll use those in just a minute. All right, so let's talk about uh, where we are in the plans process, uh, what we've accomplished so far, and what you can expect to happen next. So this slide has got a general breakdown of our process into three phases. That uh, first phase, foundation and problem analysis, is complete. It involved the identification of the needs of the plan, as well as the opportunities that we hope the plan can capitalize on. Uh, about the middle of the second phase is where we are now. The park has assembled, again, preliminary development concepts, and we're seeking your review and comment on those. Decision making has not occurred at this phase. Uh, and as mentioned earlier, even though a lot of thought and effort uh, has gone into the designs that the park has presented and that are now under review, they are not final and they are lacking important feedback from you about how you use the park's lands and how you would like to improve uh, your experience and the experience of others. We need your comments and suggestions and the main reason that we're here today is to encourage you uh, to submit those comments to us. So after we collect uh, public feedback and incorporate, we will incorporate it into the designs, there will be changes, and we will finalize development concepts. That will lead to more consultation um, uh, more with, with, with you, with the public, and with specific stakeholders, and ultimately to the production of a complete draft plan, um, which will again have another opportunity for public comment and review before final decisions are, are made. We anticipate that complete draft uh, probably sometime next spring. Uh, after public comment on that version uh, it will be finalized, if changes are necessary, they would be made, and be the, with, the, with the process completed and the plan, uh, the decisions actually made on the plan next, sometime next summer. However, implementation of you know, all the construction and everything that you see uh, would take many years and would be dependent on funding and partnership commitments. All right, so this brings me now uh, to the most important slide in the presentation, the reason, and the reason that we're engaging with you now, your help, uh, how, getting your help uh, with the planning effort. We want to hear your thoughts and opinions on these preliminary development concepts. There are three primary, there are three ways of delivering comments to us. The, the first, our favorite, is via the Parks Planning website at the link provided here. Uh, at the website, you'll find a digital version of the newsletter, so please you can share this link or if anybody's interested that's not here today, uh, this is a good way to get the newsletter into their hands as well. You'll, uh, you can find it, it, it's available for download at, that, at this site. Um, there are also some specific general questions that you can, that if you answer them, you can help the park refine the plans and prioritize our future work. Uh, and all that is available if you go to that link through the open, open for comment tab on the left. You can also write to us. Snail mail is acceptable as well. Uh, you can the address on the screen, but you do not need to know or remember any of this. All of it is in it is in the newsletter. The important thing, though, is that we're we're hoping to get comments by uh, the Fourth of July, so that we have the opportunity to incorporate them into the next phase of the de development of the plan. Um, and then, lastly, the third way is you can share ideas with us to here here today. Uh, that's why that's why we've come, and we'll be doing that though at the at these individual stations, so that people can tell us about things they specifically like about specific places. Uh, and we'll break up and go out into the lobby in just a few minutes for that. But before we do that, I wanted to just uh, pull the room and see if you got if there's any questions on what Catherine and I have already presented about the process, uh, the purpose, why we're doing this, um, how you comment, uh, things like that. If you have specific ideas about specific places, I encourage you to save them until we're out in the other room and, and at the boards taking notes. Just, Jim. Yes, sir. Uh, 
Uh, we provided email addresses as we signed in. Yeah. Are you all going to be communicating to us? Also email? Yeah, so there's, a, yes, I, uh, the sign-in sheet, that's my, I like to see how many people have come and, and that we've reached, but also it's to develop a, a mailing list. So when big, oper when other opportunities come out, especially for like review when that draft is ready, everybody who's given me an email address that works and that I can read, we'll get a, we'll get a, a notice that's, that things are available and there's opportunities to comment. Absolutely. Questions? Okay. All right, so we want to spend the rest of the time uh, out in the other room, uh, giving you all an opportunity to talk with our teammates about the ideas that you have for specific areas and for the plan as a whole. Uh, those boards are set up out there uh, to give you something to reference and review and, and think about, give us responses to what at least the park staff is thinking is a, is a viable future, but again, they're preliminary, they're just to generate thought. Um, we're going to do our best to take notes as you talk, but I also want to stress that uh, it, it, it's best uh, talk with us here today, give us, tell us what you think, but also please do, if at all possible, submit to us uh, submit written comments in your own words. It's the best way to make sure that we don't miss any of the, uh, any of the thoughts that you've got. And then as I close out this presentation and before we uh, switch over into the discussions out in the lobby, uh, I was going to point out that these, are the, these questions are in the newsletter. They're also in the, uh, 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 on the website if you go to it. And they, they help us, um, it, 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 they're, they're designed to help us think about specific changes that we could make to individual sites, but also to think about the, the whole park holistically as we put this, uh, the, the DCP together. And the first one, this is it's really some basic stuff, like what do you like to do in the park now? What do you wish you could do in the park in the future? Um, what's your vision for uh, resource preservation and, and, and management of the, of the distinct units in the park overall? Uh, what local uh, initiatives or organizations could the, could the park work with uh, to advance stewardship and preservation? Question four, which park areas are most important to you and why? And then question five, uh, do you like anything in these, in these designs? And, and if, if you don't, uh, why don't you like it? Uh, the last thing I want to say while I'm standing up here talking at you is to point out the bolded question number four. Uh, the DCP is anticipated to be a long-term plan. I remember I mentioned the, shot, the general management for Shiloh, that they're still operating under, was published in 1981. Uh, so these are, these are big efforts that we expect to last for a long time in, inside for the, for the management of the park. And implementation of all the work that's that we've come up with together is not going to happen immediately. The Park Service operates in a significantly constrained financial environment, and despite the vision of all this development that the DCP is laying out, it's not all immediately going to materialize just because the plan has been completed. So, with that, number four is very helpful to us. We were really interested in hearing uh, from the general public what specific places and what specific features of the plan are most important to you, because that can help us prioritize implementation and do the most valuable uh, enhancements uh, early. Okay, that's it. I'm done talking at you, unless you have any other questions. I'm going to encourage us to get up and walk around, stretch your legs. Uh, the Catherine did some introductions. Laura Lee is going to be way down at the far end of the lobby, right? Uh, uh, she's speak to standing, to, uh, standing at the uh, uh, contraband camp at Battery Robinette, taking notes on that. Anthony's going to be near her, do uh, talk uh, at the Confederate Siege Works at that specific unit. Uh, Matt is uh, is dealing with Davis Bridge and Fallen Timbers. At, is Ashley? Ashley, I think, is taking over for Tom. Yes, she is. Ashley's taking over for Tom in the in the library uh, at the May 17th and May 19th Federal Lines subunits. Uh, Rachel is over there in the exhibit space. Uh, she's got Battery F and May 28th Federal Lines. And then I'm going to be right outside the door here at, that over, at an overall project map, collecting whatever general comments or answering whatever questions you all have about the, the plan. So, I mean, it doesn't matter. Just walk around. Give us comments on all of it. But if people are out there ready to take notes on what you have to say. And I'll leave these up in case you want to get inspiration to ask the answer any of these questions as you walk around.
And those are in the book as well. Yeah, so yes, they are. That's true. They are on page four, I think, in green. These, the, these prompting questions. Cool. Don't leave. Stick with us. Come and come and tell us what you think. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Six miles off, they got the Yeah. And they would stay lying and they would make a foot. So, what did my 